We have had one unintended development today, which is our one of our speakers, um, Dr. Expedito Luna from Brazil, um, has no electricity at the moment. Um, so he has been trying to join and he may be able to join midway through the webinar, but we're not confident about that at the moment. These things do occur. Um, however, we do have our other speaker with us and I'm delighted about that. So what we're going to do um, is ask, ask Dr. Quinteros um, from Chile to give her presentation first. We'll go through that, it will take about 20 minutes and then we'll see whether Dr. Luna has joined us. Um, and if he's not, um, I'm really delighted that we also have Dr. Luciana Brondi with us, who is a colleague from the Usher. She's a physician and an epidemiologist She's about to join Public Health Scotland, but she has been coordinating our communicable disease control module for our master's in public health. She's from Brazil. And if uh, Dr. Luna doesn't join us, she's gonna very kindly say a few words about the current situation in Brazil and will also be available to answer questions. So that's how we're going to run this session. So I'd like to um, hand over to our first speaker now, who as I say is Dr. Maria, Maria Elisa Quinteros, and she is from Talca in Chile. You will have seen her biography um, on the website. She's um, very active both in epidemiology and in public health more generally, and she's been closely following developments in Chile in relation to COVID-19. So I'll hand over to Maria Elisa and she will share our slides now. Thank you very much, uh, Linda. And um, thanks for the invitation to present what is going uh, in our country. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and good morning for people in Latin America countries. Um, today, I, I would like to share with you how in Chile we are responding to, to the pandemic. And um, first of all, I would like to, to, to declare that I don't have any conflict of interest with the industry or um, any uh, pol a party. Uh, just I, I work in the academy and uh, try to do my best with the research progress in, in all countries. I have divided the presentation in three parts. The first one is a uh, context information because I think it's important to know how uh, the, the pandemic um, arrived in our country was, was the, the main situation in social and political aspect, the epidemiology of COVID-19 and how we respond to these uh, three. Uh, I don't know if you, you remember in the last October in 2019, we faced a enormous crisis in our country. And this picture is the, the first um, or the tr trigger that we start the, the crisis in our country where the secondary students uh, start to protest in the subway because the, the price of the ticket have increased. And they were severely repressed by the police and all the, the Chilean people start on um, a big part of the society start to go to the go out to the street and we have this kind of a slogan, uh, Chile has woken up. It's mean woken up from a lot of years, almost 40 years after the, the end of the dictator, Pinochet, and we, we came to the democracy. But uh, anyways, most of the policy in our country are part of the, the dictator until now. To summarize the social crisis reason, some of them are we face a chronic inequality in our country. The pension and health system has a lot of problems because we have a very uh, neoliberal, neoliberal way to understand the, the economy. The, the basic services are so expensive. We face uh, some corruption cases and um, even from the police, this was hard for us and repression and criminalization of the student movement. There are some of the, the crises. And to compare or to try to understand what is the social situation in Chile, 
I have found a comparison with Germany. So I, I'm apologize because I couldn't find from UK or Scotland. The minimum salary in Chile is 360 euros per man, per month, sorry, compared with Germany, it's lower. Uh, the university fee is so high, around higher than 2,000 euros per year. The cost of living is no, so we don't have a big gap with the cost of living in Germany, for example. The retirement pension is lower than 200 euros per man. The parliament salary is 31 times the minimum salary of the country, compared with Germany, say 6.5. And transport cost is 14% of the minimum salary. This slide told us about how is the situation and, how, and the inequality inside our country um, have been increased and the, the gap between the richest poor and the rest of the society is, is, is enormous. In that situation, um, in, after, during the, the protest, some people was uh, injured. For example, he is Gustavo Gatica, is one of the two uh, people who were completely blind after the protest, and around 240 Chileans have suffered uh, from eye injury during that, that bit. And all the situation start to uh, have some results in the, in, in the, of course, in the society. And we finished the year with the lowest uh, improvement rate in our history uh, from the government. The government at the end in December of 2019 uh, only had 6% of improvement. And I mean, all the society was, uh, was angry for the, how they conduce the, the, the protest or the crisis. After that, uh, we, the pandemic arrived in our country. And this is the situation that we face nowadays. Here you can see the number of confirmed cases. The pandemic started in Chile in March and we had almost two months for prepare or response, okay? Today we have, uh, or two days before, we had around 260,000 confirmed people and a small number of asymptomatic, okay? I would like to show you here using the, the epidemic curve uh, some social and political uh, answers that we, we face during this month who can explain why our, our curve have increased almost exponentially. Uh, first, we had the, the first case in March. After that, we have some uh, interviews and declaration of the Minister of Education. The, the state decide don't suspend the, the class, classes or lecture of the student, and the un academic universities, or the professor start to, to, to write a letter uh, asking to the government to suspend the classes, and the medical college uh, start to press to the government to increase the uh, response strategy uh, related with the COVID. Our president say in the middle of the March, Chile is much better prepared than Italy, and this is a confused message for the, for the people. And the medical doctors and mayor of the, 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 some district in our country start to uh, require for lockdown of the city. And Minister of Health uh, thought that the idea was completely foolish and unnecessary. After that, at the end of the month, more than 1,500 1, scientific we asked for lockdown and a, a better uh, management of the pandemic. In April, the old ministry uh, told to the population the COVID had, has immunity. For that reason, they require or they, they thought to create a sanitary passport that was criticized for the World Health Organization. After some time, the idea was uh, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> conclude, and we start some kind of strategic and dynamic quarantine, what divide, divide the city in some part, uh, some people that are in quarantine, other people not. And in the middle of the April, 
the government create a plan, return plan for government officials and back to a school plan. Some studies uh, after the, the application of this plan, uh, the back to safe to school, uh, conclude that the, this strategy reduced in around 80% of the effect of the lockdown in Santiago, in the capital. And then in April, uh, some mayors start to open the mall and the Society of Epi Epidemiology report some inconsistent or lack of information and in the data related with COVID. During May, in the, half, the middle of the month, uh, we had total lockdown in the capital and the Society of, Epi of Epidemiology uh, again start to report there are some uh, inconsistent or some problem with the register of death. And at the end of the month, or Minister of Health say something like there is a level of poverty and overcrowding of which I was not aware of the magnitude it had. This month, um, the government created a strategy to distribute some food box for the families, but we faced a lot of problems because the distribution of that was a chaos, was very, very uh, unfortunate. And we, the government recognized that the register of death has some problems and add almost 650 death plus to the register. And we start a risk communication campaign based on blaming the population. I mean, the responsibility of the, this, um, this, the increase of the number of cases is uh, individual responsibility. After that, the government create, you can see how the, the curve has increased. The government start to create some protocols for reopen, uh, reopen restaurant and cafe. And in the middle of this month, the sanitary residents start to operate and we change a new health a minister of health. As you can see, there are many uh, con confused uh, risk communication for the population and a sense or a sensation that we, we are doing everything in a successful uh, way. Here you can see the PCR testing, sorry. How I uh, have increased uh, during the time, the capacity of the health system to, to perform the PCR test. And also it's important to say that some of the, the, some laboratories for the university have helped to increase the testing. And we are performed in a cumulative X test around a million uh, tests performed. Also, it's important to highlight the almost 45% of the total tests are uh, out of pocket spending. I mean, the people who is paying for the test for their own, own uh, money. Uh, regarding the um, rate of positive tests, we can see the nowadays is around 35% the positive uh, test, uh, higher um, about the, the World Health Organization recommendation around 10%. Um, here we can see the distribution of the cases by age and sex, and mainly are distributed in the adults uh, part of the population uh, with 60, 52% of the cases are men in this uh, age. Uh, here we can see the incidence by a uh, spatial distribution by region. I, in this plot, in this graph, we can see the, in the darkest area, the highest incident rate. In the capital, in Santiago, in the north of Chile, Atacama region, and the south of Chile, in Magallanes. Uh, this table shows us uh, about the incidence and mortality rate and case fatality 
This is the capital of Chile, the, the Geo Metropolitana, where most of the Chilean population uh, live there, 8 million people. Remember that Chile has around uh, 19 million people. And the incident rate is around 2,500 uh, cases per 100,000 inhabitants. And the mortality is around 43%. And the case fatality, 1.7%. But if we see we face another problems in another regions. We are a very centralized country, but any, anyways, we are facing some problems in the north, Tarapacana and Tofagasta, with high uh, in, uh, incident rates and um, lower, of course, mortality rate, because, um, but anyways, a big uh, public health problem. And the, in the south, the Magallanes region, we have also a high, high <clears throat> incidence rate. Uh, here, uh, I would like to use this slide just to say uh, the problem that we face with the death notification. Here is the, the, the death report by the government. Uh, it's around 4,000 dead uh, people. But the government only, only considered the cases were, that were uh, confirmed with PCR after correct or adjust for the World Health uh, Organization recommendation that includes some suspect uh, death related with COVID. The, 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 fund, the, the death increased to 7,000 uh, cases. And the, of course, the mortality rate has increased to 36 uh, dead people per uh, 100,000 inhabitants. This slide, we can see how we are trying to increase the number <coughs> of ventilators over, over time. And see, I can, <coughs> sorry, I can see this is a nice or good uh, strategy. This is uh, successful. Uh, and nowadays, the in intensive care unit bed national wide uh, reach 86% the rate of occupancy. I would like to highlight, um, I would like to highlight uh, one of the reasons that we have this increased number of cases in the last month. Here you can see a plot where in the dusk color, there are some districts that the poorest of the country higher than 30% of poor, poorness in the north, some of them, in the west part of the capital and in the south. And here we can see the same plot with the, the, with the same district. We can not notice the mortality rate and we can see a direct relationship between the poor, poor, poor areas and the highest mortality Right, and you can see how uh, how unequal is even the spatial distribution in in um, uh, or, or cities. This is only a plot for Santiago. Uh, we, I, we don't have a plot for the rest of the cities, but I imagine the situation is, is similar. Uh, regarding to the mortality rate in hospital and public and private, because we are, have a mixed system. In the public uh, hospital, we can see higher uh, mortality rates compared with the private in red. In this table, we can notice the effective reproductive number. And it's interesting because in the national wide, we can observe during the last past two weeks, the, the RE have reduced the number, it's a good uh, news for all people, but if it's similar in Santiago, it have reduced the effective reproductive number, but this is important to highlight in some regions, the problem have increased. The, this number have increased in Atacama, in O'Higgins, Maule, Ñuble, and this will be a problem and I'm sure we need to continue improving the strategy. I live in the Maule region. I am worried because this, of course, uh, uh, our number uh, have increased. Uh, 
regarding to response, it's so difficult to crit criticize, but I try to do it from very academic uh, point of view. And also I, I talk with my, my PhD colleague from the School of Public Health of the Universidad de Chile. And, uh, and thanks to them to help me to complete this. And I have divide in pros and contras. The pros of the response, we start, uh, we had a early preparedness with regulatory and institutional response. We closed borders early. Uh, the Minister of Finance at Central Bank developed a strategy to, fight, to face the crisis. The, there are some bank loans for low and medium businesses. A school and universities closed early. The army force start to collaborate with the government. We had amazing health workers and they received training for COVID-2 uh, through the, all the network healthcare in Chile. We had a rapid response from hospital. The government uh, increased the number of ventilators and beds. We had a successful influenza vaccination and we developed a law of protection to the employment. Of course, as, as, you, as I mentioned before, the testing capacity have increased and we had some sanitary residents for people who cannot stay at home for the, with, when they are ill. And regarding the cons, uh, the, there was a confused risk communication from the very beginning until now. We had an expert presidential advisory com committee. <clears throat> they are um, amazing scientific, but the government didn't pay attention to that committee and the kind of invisible committee. We all, our strategic was a hospital centric uh, model. Yeah. For that reason, the, high, the primary care level was invisible or was uh, excluded. And we had a, a wide, wider or enormous uh, primary care uh, level and they were stuck uh, from the, the beginning of the pandemic. And the focus for sure was mainly in treatment instead of prevention. The communities, organized communities were excluded from the, from the strategy. We had partial lockdowns that maybe help to confuse to the population and with help uh, authority. We create a kind of mesa social in Spanish. It's a kind of comp comprehensive committee where some rep representatives from the uh, civil society uh, are part of that committee, but uh, similar to the advisory committee of experts uh, not were not taken into account. And I believe the, it seems there's a political management of the crisis instead of health based on evidence management of the crisis. Lack of knowledge of or authorities about vulnerable, vulnerable population. We are very centralized country. And for example, in region need the, 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 the norms and, and guidelines came from the central uh, level. Lack of real social security and the protest start in our country because the people, some of the people work just day to day and they don't have uh, money if it, if it don't work for, for food or to live. The out of the pocket spending is higher in, in regarding to the test and the family box distribution was a disaster. Here we can see a new where the protests and barricades start during the pandemic. Um, Santiago filled with protests and, and the curve and people even during the pandemic go out and, and, and protest. The underestimation of the primary care and political error that margin the territorial health of the strategy against the pandemic. And two weeks ago, a new minister of health uh, start to, the, to, to work with, uh, the go with, in the government and they have some new ideas. Uh, the first one is to strengthen the healthcare primary level, increase the testing and uh, to, to pay attention to the scientific communities. 
we hope, with, this is my final slide, I, we hope this new health minister uh, change the way to, to manage and improve the, the thing that he, he, he could. And uh, even all of us who we, we belong to the Chilean network of training in public health, we are all of us open to collaborate, even the, also the, the Society of Epidemiology and also the Medical College and all the professional college. I would like to thank to my colleagues in the Universidad de Talca for, because they they help me with the information. Muchas gracias por su atención. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Quintero. So really grateful uh, for that presentation. And we have a few questions. We'll have time for them at the end. So I'm going to hand over now to Dr. Luna, who I believe has joined us, um, which is great news. There we are, Expedito, lovely to see you. Uh, so I'll hand over to you. Colleagues have seen your biography. I don't want to take up any more time. So over to you if you'd like to share your screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for, uh, in, for the invitation. And I'll try to share my slides. Uh, Can you see my slides? Not yet. So if, if you just click on the little green button saying share screen at the moment, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, just a minute. And um, we, I know you're working on a different computer from the one we practiced on uh, with you. So we do, we can open them if that's helpful to you because we've got them. Well, uh, it opens uh, systems preference and I don't, I don't, I don't really know what to do. Okay, no, don't worry. I know you're on a different computer for our practice. What we're going to do is Susan Buckingham is going to bring up the slides now. And um, there we go. So we're on your opening slide now. So if you're happy, maybe just to look at the slides on your own screen. And then if you can just, okay. say, ne just say next when you want Susan to move to the next slide. Okay, then uh, next one. Well, uh, Maria has made a nice presentation and also um, an introduction to mine because uh, they are different countries, but similar problems. The next one, please. Next slide. Well, uh, I'll go over the numbers uh, uh, of the pandemic in Brazil and a bit of the timeline and how, do, how we got to this situation and a bit about the response of the country. The next one, please. Well, uh, the first confirmed case in Brazil uh, had the onset of symptoms on February 26, and it was a person that uh, had come back from vacations in Milan in Italy. And uh, in the beginning, uh, the transmission was uh, mostly concentrated in Sao Paulo and Rio, and in the, uh, the regions around those two cities. This was in the first two weeks of March. And in this, the second half of March, uh, the virus uh, transmission was spread all over the country. Uh, this is a study of my colleagues at the University of Sao Paulo uh, with a cooperation of a UK institution like uh, Oxford. And they have sequenced like uh, 500 genomes of the virus from different regions of Brazil. And what they have saw that there were more than they couldn't uh, 
see more than a hundred introductions of different introductions of the virus in Brazil, but just three of them, three clades uh, got uh, spread all over the country. Two of them started in Sao Paulo and spread all over the country. And another, another one, the third one in the Northeast of Brazil. Next one, please. Well, this is the current situation. As you know, Brazil is a very large country uh, with a population of 211 million people. And as of yesterday, we have almost 1.2 million cases, confirmed cases, and 50, almost 54,000 deaths. And an incidence of uh, over 500 per 100,000 population. And uh, as you, you can see, the cure, uh, it's still rising, but uh, the speed is slower. The RT is slower now, it's slower than it was, it was in the beginning. Uh, the next one, please. Again, uh, this is another model and uh, prediction for the next five days. Uh, it's still a uh, rising curve in this model. Uh, what we can see is that uh, the RT is, is uh, diminishing and it, now it's around 1.5, 1.05. The next one. Now it's a comparison between uh, among Brazil and the other countries. And uh, we are now the second in the world with the number of cases, but with the new cases and new deaths, well, we are already above the United States. Then we are in the first place in the world. <laughs> the next one. Oh, and then, uh, uh, the, the epidemic uh, is, is behaving differently in the different regions of the country. Uh, this, the northern, the northwestern area is the Amazon region, the states of the Amazon region. Uh, the transmission was very high in April and May, and now is decreasing in all states except this one, the north, this northern state. And uh, transmission is still very high in central Brazil, which uh, it's the place where the epidemic got uh, later, and also in some the states of the northeastern Brazil. Then we have uh, numbers uh, below one in, in the northern part of Brazil and still close to two in some regions, some states of Brazil. The next one. Well, uh, there are uh, two serious surveys have been already conducted in a national level. And uh, they were done in 133 municipalities with a population above 100,000. There are around 300 municipalities in Brazil with a population above 100,000. And uh, of the, those 300, 133 were selected for the survey. And they, in, this, in these municipalities, there are 68 million people. That's 32% of Brazilian population. The first survey was conducted from May 14 to 21. And the zero prevalence was 1.4%. And the second in June 4 to 7, the zero prevalence was 2.8%. In the first survey, 11 of the 15 municipalities with, with the highest prevalence were located in the Amazon region. And in the second, 12 of the 15 were located in the Amazon region. Some municipalities in the Amazon region reached 25% of a zero prevalence. Uh, this was conducted with uh, uh, rapid tests so uh, there's a problem with specificity or sensitivity maybe, so that uh, zero prevalence may be even higher. The next one.
Well, and uh, most of the Brazilian states, they uh, introduced the quarantine and social dis distancing uh, by the end of March. And uh, the, the quarantine uh, is being measured, the success, by the movement of, of mobile, or mobile phones. And as we can see, it was never really uh, very high uh, addition to the, to the quarantine. It reached at maximum 59% of, cell, of cellular phones that did not move in, in that day. And uh, by this month, by this uh, first, uh, second week of June, some states started uh, opening up and then the, the addition to quarantine has diminished. Next one, please. Well, and then how did we get to this situation? Then, uh, this since the beginning, the federal government of Brazil and the Ministry of Health, they uh, underestimated the epidemics. And that was reflected in the preparation of laboratories, the preparations of uh, intensive care, everything, uh, I think they thought uh, it, Brazil was not really gonna be reached by the pandemic, I don't know why. And the president of the Republic himself uh, has acted as, as sabotaging the, the, the uh, control measures. And then uh, he, he made two uh, formal speeches on national television, the first one in March 24 and the second one in April 8. And the first one, uh, he uh, underestimated the, the pandemic, that COVID is a little flu and it's a media hysteria. And in the second one, that uh, he already had the solution. The, the problem was solved with the chloroquine. Next one. Well, and he, he went on with defying the, the social distancing measures, promoting rallies with his, his supporters without wearing masks and, uh, shaking hands with people all every weekend in March and April. And here in Sao Paulo, his supporters went with the cars and blocked uh, the, the streets that access to the main hospitals of the city. And uh, the states, they were forced to go to the Supreme Court to, to get the rights, uh, to confirm that they had the right to the authority to decree quarantine. And uh, the Supreme Court of Brazil in April 15 recognized that the states had the, the, the authority to decree quarantine. And what's the consequence of that? Each one of the 27 states adopted a different uh, way of uh, social distancing and quarantine. And that became difficult for the population to understand what was going on. The next, please. Well, and uh, also in the middle of the pandemic in April 16, uh, he fired the first minister of health on, uh, over the issue of quarantine and social distancing because the uh, minister was in favor and the president disagreed. And less than a month later, uh, he fired the second minister of health over the, the chloroquine because uh, the minister refused to adopt the a policy of distributing uh, widely the chloroquine. So uh, he was fired again. And now since May 15 or more than a month now, uh, we don't have a health minister. There is a caretaker minister, which is an army general. <laughs> the next one. And uh, the states went on and this, not only uh, with the social distancing, quarantine also made mandatory uh, masks in public transportation. 
And here is a, it, a tribute to the health professionals in, in Rio de Janeiro in April. Next, please. And even with the uh, mounting evidence that uh, the chloroquine is, uh, is not effective, the Minister of Health on May 20, the new minister, the, the general, he, they decided to extend the, the use to children, pregnant women, and uh, mild cases. And on June 7, they decided to change the way the data were presented. And uh, they would uh, only present the, the deaths that, uh, that were occurred the day before, not the, the other deaths that we're waiting for lab results and were confirmed uh, that happened the days before. So in a way that would diminish the number of deaths. And uh, that was also taken to the Supreme Court and uh, who, that made uh, the government to, to back from that position and continue to present the whole, the whole figures. Next, please. And his, uh, his latest measure was to say that uh, the, those, those numbers of cases and deaths, they were fake news and uh, there weren't that many sick people. And he, he calls on his supporters to invade hospitals and fill the hospitals to see that there, there were empty beds. And uh, this here is one of the invasions his supporters made in a, in a uh, hospital in Rio. But at the same time, the opposition is growing and uh, they also decided to, to go to the streets despite the quarantine to protest against the government policies. Next, please. Well, uh, to understand a bit of, of the response, uh, I'll talk a, 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 a little about the Brazilian public health system. Uh, our system was established in 1988 after the redemocratization, uh, after the, the last military dictatorship. And it's, it was inspired in the uh, national health system of the United Kingdom. And uh, it provides free health care for the whole population uh, from primary care to high complexity, transplant, everything. And uh, around 80% of the Brazilian population uh, depend on the public health system. There is a private health system, maybe for uh, paid by health insurances, uh, which covers around 20% of the population. And uh, among other things, there is a very large uh, primary care network with more than 40,000 clinics spread all over the country. Uh, and uh, there, there are three levels of government, the federal level, the states and the municipalities. The federal level is responsible for the funding of the system, for the most part of the funding of the system and also for the technical and scientific guidelines uh, and the policy guidelines. The state levels is a coordination of municipalities and some states like here where I live in the state of Sao Paulo, uh, the high complexity hospitals belong to the state level and municipal governments, they are the ones responsible for delivering healthcare for uh, uh, men, for the management of the clinics, the personnel, everything. Well, uh, with the uh, inaction of, of the federal level uh, in, in its role of establishing guidelines and policies, the states had to step in the, the emergence of, uh, uh, of, of the COVID and they, most of them declared quarantine by late March, but they were ill-prepared for this new role. Uh, 
uh, they didn't have the uh, enough personnel. They they were not used to to go to the international market to buy respirators for for uh, ICUs to buy uh, laboratory tests. That was done by the federal level, and uh, the states didn't know how to do that. And they have also uh, different uh, capacities to enforce social distancing. And they issued conflicting measures. Like here in Sao Paulo, uh, there was already in place uh, a car shift. Like uh, on Mondays, the cars with the license, license plates in, in one and two do not run. And Tuesdays, three and four, and so on. And uh, that was changed to, to make people, uh, to increase the adherence to, to the social distancing. In, in a, one week, there were three different measures for, for the car shifts. The first, they decided to go uh, odd and even numbers each day. Then the, two days later, that was changed to uh, blocking the, some lanes of the main roads. And that was also again changed and back to the old systems. So uh, the population is confused. Uh, no one really knows what's going on. And uh, the changes are very are unclear. Uh, the next one. And uh, as, uh, as in Chile, there was an emphasis on uh, ICUs and high complexity care and not in uh, primary care. The country was, has a very large primary care network and uh, it was um, uh, forgotten by, by the authorities. No one thought of giving uh, them guidelines and there was uh, also a shortage of uh, personal protective equipment for the primary care. And uh, only now uh, in June that uh, the primary care uh, network is responding and say we are present, we need to do something. And uh, that's been, that begun to change. But uh, it seems that uh, uh, at least here in the state of Sao Paulo, that the state government is in a way satisfied what's going on because uh, here in the metropolitan area of Sao Paulo, the RT is decreasing, the number of cases are, uh, is also decreasing and uh, the ICUs are, uh, are not with full capacity. And so it seems that they, they decided that this is okay, that we can manage to keep on with the pandemic going on and we will relax the social distancing measures. And that's what's being done. And in, the, in part of the state of Sao Paulo, uh, in the Western part, the pandemic is still rising and uh, the economy, the commerce is opening. And then uh, we don't really know what's going to happen. We'll probably have we'll have an extended transmission. And also thinking that uh, we are in the southern hemisphere and uh, it's winter time. Um, at the same time, uh, uh, the universities, uh, health professional associations, the media, uh, state and local governments have joined the efforts to respond to the epidemic and to respond to the inaction of the federal government. And uh, uh, we, we now see a mixed situation in the country. Uh, uh, in the Northern region, in the Amazon region, uh, it seems that the first wave has passed and uh, the numbers are decreasing. In some parts of Brazil, they are still increasing. And uh, with the, now the opening of the economy, we'll probably have an extended period of transmission. Um, I think this is the, my last slide and I would like to, to thank you and I'm open for questions. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Luna, and uh, thank you so much for joining us despite the challenges. So we have 10 minutes for questions, which is great. Um, colleagues have added some questions to the chat, uh, the Q&A function. I've also been emailed a couple of questions. So um, Maria, Elisa, and Expedito, I'm going to ask you both uh, similar questions. So uh, the first one was about whether the scientific advice to your governments has been different from what might have been given in other countries or whether you think scientists in Brazil and Chile have said more or less the same thing as the World Health Organization and it's really the political response that's been different. So was there scientific consensus? Maybe if I come to you first, Maria Elisa in Chile, and was there scientific consensus about action in Brazil, Expedito? And it's really the politicians that have not got this right. What do you think? Mm, yes, yeah. there, I think they're, oh, I'm sorry. No, don't Please, worry. Go ahead. No, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think in Chile we had a brilliant scientific and uh, recognized uh, inside the country and uh, outside. And and I, I have read the the in the report that they wrote every week, and they are consensus with the international recommendation of similar to another countries that the, the COVID management was successful. Um, I, I don't know what happened inside the minister, um, minister health minister, um, or in the, the, the policy maker that the recommendation have not implemented in another country. As I mentioned in my presentation, in my opinion, I think this a political management of the of the pandemic instead of evidence-based management. Thank you. Well, it's pretty much the same. There was a wide consensus with the international uh, recommendations, uh, with WHO recommendations, but uh, the president of the republic he was aligned with the U.S. president and uh, decided that was, it was not a problem. And uh, he fired two health ministers uh, over the disagreements with the conductions of the pandemic. And uh, in the end, he found some doctors and some uh, scientists that supported his position, uh, especially uh, on the chloroquine uh, issue. Uh, he ended up finding some doctors that said, no, that's okay. We are using in our, in our patients and they are doing fine, Think, things like that. And they never showed any, any uh, robust data on that, but it, it goes in the media and uh, it's their position. <laughs> it's very similar in Chile with the chloroquine. Yeah, really? yeah. yeah. A similar experience in both countries. Yes, it's, I think many countries around the world, the political response has not been good, not, not just uh, in Latin America, but many countries. So uh, the next question I think is about um, contact tracing. Neither of you uh, had time to mention, um, has there been any attempt at contact tracing and uh, quarantine of people, or has that not been a main focus of the response? Um, in, um, in the case of my country, we, we had a, a tracer contact program, but uh, on the authority, on the um, health um, authority, is uh, is weak after the when we came back to the democracy, and on the focus mainly is on the treatment, and in every region of the country we have a, a team of epidemiologists, but there are two or three uh, people. And uh, you know to 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 keep the contact by by phone, mobile, or go to the 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 resident for the patient. I think it's complicated because there's a, a overload of work or for for the epidemiology uh, teams. Yeah. I think they are not prepared in to 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 abort all the the situation but they're doing the best as they can, for sure. Well, over here, first of all, there was a, a shortage of, of testing, of PCR testing. 
There was not enough for uh, this all suspect cases. So the testing was um, prioritized for the severe cases and health professionals and not in primary care level. So uh, it was difficult to, to conduct contact tracing just on the basis of uh, syndromic surveillance. But uh, as I said, the uh, response is heterogeneous uh, among the Brazilian states. And some states, especially the Southern states, which are richer, they had uh, the ability to, to buy tests and they are doing uh, contact tracing and uh, isolation of suspects and of uh, contacts of, of confirmed cases. But uh, in, in most of the country here in Sao Paulo and everywhere else, uh, the primary care uh, network has been sidelined in, uh, in, in, the, in the COVID response. So uh, we have the capacity. There are, as I said, more than 40,000 primary care clinics uh, with thousands of um, community health agents and which could be, uh, could be working in contact tracing and they are not. So just in a few places in the Southern part of Brazil. Yeah, this is a common theme coming up across countries is the lack of reliance or ability of the national government to trust and, and resource local public health and primary care infrastructure. So uh, both Dr. Brondi, who I mentioned at the beginning, who kindly introduced uh, the Usher Institute to the two of you, and also another colleague from Chile, have asked about the key messages that government should be giving the public. Given that the infrastructure has not been able to respond in a number of ways, there are also basic public health messages which the government needs to communicate to the population to help them keep themselves safer. Um, has there been any mass media or public health information campaigns to try and give people advice about face coverings or hand hygiene or respiratory hygiene. Yeah, Sorry. in the case in the case of Chile, we had uh, the government use a big amount of resource, economic resource, to create a campaign, but uh, it has. I th I think it doesn't have the cultural pertinence maybe to, to the people can uh, follow the recommendation. And in the last uh, campaign is, is based on the individual responsibility. And that may, doesn't make a sense as because for, I, and I, I understand when I see every day the people uh, cannot stay at home safe, safe because they need to go out for working because if they don't work, they live with, I don't know, uh, $10 per day or less. I need to go every day to get that money. If they don't work, they don't have to food or to keep safe to the rest of the family. And then uh, we are, I don't, I don't agree with the, with the individual responsibilities, uh, policy, uh, government uh, policy, it could be, uh, be, more effective to, to keep safe to the population. And we see every day in the news how many people in Santiago, uh, in the capital, use the subway in a very uh, contact, very close together. And, and as, I told, I as I show you in the map, is that if we see the pattern of movement are the poorest areas to the downtown. Expedition? Well, uh, over here, there hasn't been any mass media campaigns on the federal level or for the national level. It all, it's, everything is being done in the, in the state levels. And then uh, the states have much less capacity, including money to do that. So uh, this, they, they, they have not been very effective. And it's the same problem as in Chile. There's a, a huge proportion of the population is very poor and they need the money on, uh, on a daily basis for, from their work and that day. And then uh, when they started relaxing the quarantine, the streets are all of a sudden full of people, full of street vendors and uh, the public transportation full again. And that's uh, complicated. <laughs> 
Your mic, uh, microphone, Linda, is uh, off. Uh, there are huge, thank you very much. There are huge challenges. And I, I wish we could come back to the two of you in a few weeks and see how the situation has, has evolved. So maybe we will have an opportunity to do that. So I'm not able to ask all the questions we've been sent, but we will forward them to you by email if you're happy. There's just a few more and uh, you can discuss those because we have the names of the people who've asked the questions. So I just wanted to thank both of you very much again. If you stay on the line, we'll have a brief conversation afterwards, but I'm going to pass on now just to highlight the next webinar for next week. Okay, so th thanks very much colleagues on the line for bearing with us and please do pass on the YouTube link uh, for those who are in different time zones and weren't able to join us today. So next week, um, I'm delighted that we have our South African colleagues uh, Professor Charles Perry and Professor Cheryl Cohen, uh, who are joining us from South Africa. And Cheryl, who's an epidemiologist, will be giving us an overview of what's been happening in South Africa in relation to the pandemic, the recent data, research, uh, etc. And then Charles, for the last section, will just be covering a, um, an unusual aspect of the South African response, which has happened in a few other countries as well, which has been was a temporary ban on alcohol sales and look at what the impact of that has been. So do join us, that's next Friday at 10 a.m. It just remains for me to thank again the Usher Comms team, our two excellent speakers and to everybody who's joined us today. Thank you very much for joining. Thanks, see you. Okay, we'll just stay on the line for a few minutes just uh, until, the, um, until the live stream stops. Oh, I, I can now, yeah, I switch. Yeah, 